again he's offered to intervene the timing was tricky trump's latest statement on kashmir came just before a key meeting between the foreign ministers of india and america india's external affairs minister s j shankar is in bangkok to attend an asean summit he met with his counterpart from america mike pompeo now it was time to send a direct message to america after the meeting jay shankar tweeted this have conveyed to american counterpart mike pompeo this morning in clear terms that any discussion on kashmir if at all warranted will only be with pakistan and only bilaterally a brief statement from the united states state department skips any mention of kashmir yes what it says pompeo and jay shankar discussed our shared commitment to upholding the rule of law freedom of navigation and democratic values in the indo pacific region very well diplomatic sweet nothings On that note it's time for we on edit our executive editor Palki Sharma Ubadhyay brings you we on stake on this new story Time for we on edit. How should we interpret Donald Trump's statements on Kashmir, and how do we prevent other potential mediators from interfering? One, as I said, Trump has a presidential election to win in a year's time. He needs to show a clear success in foreign policy. He hasn't had one yet. Afghanistan is what he's betting on, and Pakistan is the road to that win, or so he believes. Trump's first statement on Kashmir came during Imran Khan's recent U.S. visit, and now he has reiterated the offer. It could be an attempt to appease Pakistan. It could also be an attempt. Uh, it could also be, in fact, one of his famous loudmouth gibberish that carries very little sense. Whatever the case, India has been categorical in its response, but tough words are not enough. Unless the issue of Kashmir is resolved, there will always be third parties attempting to mediate. The Indian government has to remove the special status and bring Kashmir on par with other parties. Over the last 70 years, several countries and the United Nations have offered to mediate. India has been able to thwart. such attempt so far but now it's time to put a full stop on the issue once and for all remove the ambiguous laws bring kashmiri society into the fold and resolve the issue here's a government that has brought in major reforms a government that has shown the will to act the stomach to take hard decisions the ball is now in the indian government's court another contentious issue the united states and the taliban are set to resume talks on afghanistan that is today the us special representative zalme khalizad has arrived in doha for what is the eighth round of talks aimed at restoring peace in afghanistan ahead of talks khalizad tweeted saying that the two parties were pursuing a peace agreement and not a withdrawal agreement he also made it clear that the us's presence in and withdrawal from afghanistan are both conditional us president donald trump has flagged progress in the peace talks with taliban he said that the two parties have made a lot of progress and are still in talks however trump also said that the us could win over afghanistan in 2 to 3 days time but was not looking to kill 10 million people with respect to afghanistan we've made a lot of progress we're talking but we've also made a lot of progress we're reducing it we've been there for 19 years we're really serving as policemen We could win Afghanistan in 2 days or 3 days or 4 days if we wanted but I'm not looking to kill 10 million people. Now why are these peace talks so important to the US or for that matter President Donald Trump? Trump has promised to pull out American troops from Afghanistan that would end America's nearly 18 year involvement in battered country for this they need peace in Afghanistan where Taliban holds a major stake in power. Washington is looking to sign a deal with the Taliban by September 1st. According to reports, the United States could propose a reduction in the number of troops stationed in Afghanistan to the Taliban during the talks, but in turn, the United States will also ask Taliban to disassociate themselves with the Al-Qaeda and any sort of violence. Beyond has learned that the proposal is to reduce troops by 8 to 9000. The remaining troops will be pulled out gradually. The US currently has an estimated 14,000 personnel in Afghanistan meanwhile there are widespread concerns among the Afghans we fear that the US's rush to pull out could see the Taliban return with some semblance of power Taliban had recently signed on a vague pledge to reduce civilian casualties but the violence has continued unabated irrespectively <laughs> 